he says it's a question that people don't like to ask because they don't like to sound stupid. It's, it's I guess something that we're supposed to know, but in reality, everyone has a, has a difficulty understanding what it is really. In context of the inter international movement itself, contemporary art refers very by and large to post World War II development of the art. So you have the modernist movement, which is the late 19th century, moving into the 20th century. And after a certain point of time, I think people were getting a little bit bored with the repetitive genre of the modernist movement. And there was a demand for more things to happen. Once you go into that period, that period they did not use the word contemporary, they used the word postmodernism. So then you saw the development of Jackson Pollock, you saw the development of the likes of Andy Warhol. So the way people were painting, the medium people were using were beginning to change. So they classified that very much into the postmodernist period. And uh, the, the by and large the majority of people within the industry marked 1970 onwards of the development, the international development of the contemporary movement. So it was, a, it was a, to a large extent a movement very uh, steered by American artists, which was a big change of the European dominance on the, on the world art movement. And you like that, you had the likes of Jasper Jones, you had the likes of Rauschenberg, and all that, and then all of that. There was a strong British movement also, with uh, Lucien Freud, with uh, Francis Bacon, and all of that. All of that. So what, what, what in fact happened, uh, the way art was produced switched from a genre style into a, a whole new development of art that they could not put into the typical genres anymore. So the genre of surrealism, the, the genre of abstract, abstract expressionism, of cubism, when, when they started moving into this period of the 70s, the whole art movement changed, the usage of medium also changed. All of a sudden, you had a very strong um, development of the conceptual art movement, you had the development of the mixed media movement. The way people painted, very interestingly, changed because of the development of what they call the importance of socio-cultural, <coughs> political and economic development. So people would now start painting with, in relation to their environment. And that for me has always been the biggest uh, definition of contemporary art, that it relates very much to your environment. As we bring that situation into our Malaysian art movement, which is a very young movement, we basically, um, in all the readings that you do, you read very much about the development of the early period, which was the pioneer art movement, which was a combination of the Nanyang and the modernist movement. And in the 50s and 60s, when we started going into painting, there was the, 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 the main artists of the time, the main painters of this time, People like Said Ahmad Jamal, people like uh, Ibrahim Hussain, people like Latif Moedin, they were, they were starting to basically, they were all a Western trained, they got opportunity to go overseas. Latif went to Germany, Said Ahmad Jamal went to Chelsea School of Art in the UK. Um, Ibrahim Hussain went to New York, he was very influenced by the anti Warhol movement. So they came back and they started introducing this very new element of things, which predominated in the 70s. So we are basically a decade or two decades behind what has happened in the Western art movement and coming down to our part of the world. So from that early modernist influence, in the early 80s, you started seeing a very big shift in how Malaysian artists would take. The, for me personally, the biggest influence at that time I would use is Fozan Omar. Fozan Omar introduced this whole thing uh, of the layer series where he would just tear the canvas, he would sew into the canvas. His, his whole concept was to try and tell people that the, the canvas was not sacred. So as an artist in your desire to express, you could, des you could decide to express yourself in any way. And my, my, my whole thing about Fozan was that his influence, was he influenced a period of time of artists who, who developed during that period. And a lot of people credited him with the movement's a progression to all of that. I had this conversation with a young Chinese artist, his name was Chow Chun Wei, and I was quite struck by his work, and I was asking him more about it, and he told me about the influence of Fozan, and how Fozan shaped it, and that was the first time I heard Fozan's name. And from then on, I then I found out later that he was an academic, he was an academic, he was a university professor, he was a teacher of the arts, um, the people like Ahmad Shukri, people like Mark Norman, all the, the later, very strongly developed mixed media artists basically came from his environment. So from the 80s, you had him introducing a very academic uh, interpretation of the usage of media within the art movement. 
And by the late 80s, you had the likes of Zulkitri Yusuf, you had the likes of Pan Ching Kwan, who then started bringing in the development of the conceptual, uh, the conceptual art movement. Going into the 90s, then the mixed media movement became very strong. And then we had the introduction of the likes of, I, I will give a strong credit to people like Jelani Abu Hassan, um, the, the, the strong usage of new expressionism and the, the way he expressed himself, and the subsequent development of the Matahati group of boys. So as you trace, uh, as you trace the movement, our movement came, I would say, more and more in the 80s and then it developed into the 90s. The early 90s saw a big expansion of the contemporary movement because there was strong patronage. Patronage is very important for us. As the patronage came in, society responded. There was an explosion of the content, of the art movement itself. And that explosion recreated interest within the modernist movement and the earlier art things that have happened as well. So this, this is something that in conversation that we, we all share this knowledge or we have an understanding of. But the issue that we face is uh, we do not have the, the academic development, the research and writing that need to accompany these things. So it's now I'm seeing more and more we're seeing these contemporary shows and very successful shows. So I think basically we are in discussion to say, look, it is time to, to start talking about these things. It is the time to maybe to see how do we engage with academics, how do we engage with intellectuals, how do we engage with more people to start the, the writing, the documentation and the spreading of the information and knowledge. This, this is a very important argument. So in a summary, in a nutshell, this is basically uh, how we came about in developing this, this art conversation with the intention to say that we have to start studying and we have to start documenting what has happened with 